The boys are back in town. <laughs> the boys. Yes, you cannot get enough of the footy, can you? I can see it on the back screen behind you as well. Yeah, it's just uh, just just background. I'm, I'm watching it on the screen now. <laughs> what score is it, mate? No, I can't really see it. Nil nil. Girl, girlfriend's got it on. She's watching with interest. <laughs> is uh, is nil nil. Is, is she is she as into the footy as you are? No, but she's she's getting there. She was telling me a while ago about the hole, number ten, and what you do in the hole. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. How about how about the boxing? Does she ever does she ever um does she ever tune uh, into the boxing? She never did until me 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 and has takes a bit more of an interest. Yeah, fair enough. You know, fair enough. Well, it's her elbows in, protective. <laughs> and what's this? What's this all about as well? I always see Dicko doing. Yeah, this is just what he does after twelve o'clock. That's all. <laughs> but it's stopped all County Live, mate. Welcome back. Welcome after a bank holiday man. weekend. Did you enjoy your bank holiday weekend? We had a cracker, mate. We had a a full day mm-hmm. session. 12 12 on no alcohol whatsoever for me, but everyone else was. Um, do you know what, mate? Hike on I, Sunday. On, mate? I've taken a tea leaf out of your book. Um, oh, I don't take anything out of my book, mate. Um, well, I have, I have. Do you know, I've I, it's been a while since I've had a beer myself, and um, I'm enjoying I'm really enjoying it. I didn't have any over the weekend, not a drop. Been staying really? away, fancy hotels where everyone, everyone around me has been having a few scoops. And I thought, Do you know what? No, I'm all right, and I'm yeah, I'm reaping the rewards, mate. Love that, mate. Love that. Change man. Change man. What will happen though? What will happen is, um, is one session will be the downfall of it. You know, I'll just I'll just have one beer somewhere along the way, and then that'll turn into two, three, and then. Um, you know, Just then, uh, then, then we're away with things. Now, Fall let's in. Yeah, but it's fine. You know, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Let's intro the show tonight. Before we, before we talk about the games over the weekend, um, we've got a very, very special guest coming on the show later on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah. I can't wait, mate. Yeah. I can't wait. The, the guest is in the backstage area as we speak. Right. Um, <laughs> But we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait until Dicko joins us as well, because uh, yeah, I, f- I think I think Dicko's quite familiar with our guest tonight. So um, so we'll wait till he comes in for that. Sounds but, interesting. But let's kick off the show as we always do with the analysis and tactical um, uh, focus from what we've seen in the last few games. Now we said last week potentially six points to discuss this week. Mm. It's not a six. But it's not near. It's not no points. In fact, it's as, it's the closest to six you're going to get without actually having six. So tell us through. Talk us through what you've seen watching County over the last few days. Yeah, so you, you, you spot on. I think first and foremost, I think two clean sheets uh, and any any success with any with any squad is the foundations are clean sheets. I spoke about it before. Uh, goalkeepers, centre backs, and and you know three three solid lines really. The back, the back four, the midfield, two, three, four, whatever they are, and, and the front players. Um, absolutely, we looked a million miles from the Dagenham game in, in the, uh, the South End game. We were pre- we we're talking about how deep I thought we were. We were sunk on the edge of the box a bit too much too soon in the Dagenham game, and I thought we invited pressure. And I remember saying to you that these are going to be a good side. They're going to be a, they're going to be up there, at the top of the league, three out of three. So, you know, we, we weren't wrong. Um, totally different approach in the in the South End game, completely took the game to them. I thought our press was far higher. We were forcing mistakes. They struggled to string passes together and, and we were, we were capitalising. Uh, if we look back again at, at singling out John Rooney, his midfield play, you know, brilliant. It's what's expected of a modern day midfielder. Um, it's not a case of just linking up play, being the link man, the brave one to get on the ball. It's a bit more than that. And it's, it's taking players the other yeah. way. And hurting teams and being dangerous, and that's what he's doing. Um, thought much better performance. Um, it's what we want, and, and Liam will know better than anybody to go to Roots Hall and not only pick up three points, to keep keep a clean sheet. Massive, massive statement of intent. So, why did things change then in the Grimsby game? Because 
I, I, I don't, I don't I, listen, I'm not the, the, the bearer of negativity, if you like. I'm fully, fully aware that, you know, winning streaks for a whole season don't go on. And, you know, and the, the clean sheet is very much a positive. What was what was the, the catalyst, if you like, in the in the inability to carry that momentum on? Because big crowd, great atmosphere. Listen, hands up right from the off. I wasn't there. I was, I was actually gutted that I wasn't there, despite being on a really exciting adventure myself. I was really looking forward to that game. I thought I had timed it quite well with it being bank holiday, but then things changed. But um, gutted to not be there. But I was expecting to hear about this barnstormer and... I don't know, you know, was it a strong opposition? Was it uh, the, the crowd and everything? Was that a bit of a factor in things, do you think? Or what what happened from from Southend to, to Grimsby? I think it's one of those things. I think it was just needed a bit of luck on the day. We created enough. Uh, Crowsdale, Keane, Rooney, ripped them to shreds down the right-hand side. Absolutely ripped them to shreds. I can, I can count on two hands how many, how many times we've, we torn them to shreds down that right-hand side, their left-hand side. Um, put some wicked balls in. I think they defended quite well, to be honest, Grimsby. They defended with their lives a little bit. And we've spoke before about the pressure that teams are under when, when you go away from home. I spoke to you about my personal experiences when you go to the likes yeah, of Tramier Road. Yeah. If you look, you know, our ground was our ground was packing again and we were putting pressure on. I think we just need that little bit of luck. Uh, on another day, Alex Reid could have had two or three. It wasn't to be. One or two of them, you could argue, great defending. Maybe one, he, he fluffed a little bit and he could have done a bit better. Um, but it's just one of those things. It's the way the game goes. On the flip side, they had a goal disallowed in the second half for a push. I don't know if you've seen that. A little a little nudge on the edge of the box. I personally didn't, give, didn't think it was a push. I thought the goal should have stood. But lucky for us, it didn't. So, in, in, I mean, in your opinion, I, I, hate, I hate to be the cliche user. If goals change games, if that goal had stood, do you think County would have been able to adapt to go on to, to, to bring the game back? Or were we potentially looking at uh, defeat? We were potentially looking at defeat. Um, because, you know, it is a, when teams get a, a goal away from home, they, they shut up shop, don't they? They go two banks of four, they shut up shop, they park up on the edge of the box and they just ride the stone. Um, you never know, do you? As we've always said, attacking the Cheadle end second second half with a full full stand. Uh, it's like having a twelfth man. But I thought the goal should have stood. Uh, I'm not as close as the referee, so I don't know. And that that's me. I'm a Stockport County fan. That's me saying that I thought it should have stood. Yeah. It, was a, it was the slightest of nudges. There was quite a few protests from their players. I, not, I can't remember too many from ours. But ref give it straight away for whatever reason. So he must be right and I must be wrong. But yeah, taking the positive, we did create a lot. Uh, Rooney again floating round in between lines because what he does so well he floats between the midfield uh, four and the back four and that's so hard to mark because you don't know whether a centre midfielder needs to drop with him or a centre half needs to come up and meet him so he's in between lines it's what we used to Jim Gannon used to teach us you, you're difficult to mark you can get on the half turn you can cause problems he was he was doing that throughout the game he was linking up with the wide players he was linking up with the strikers exactly what you want from an attacking midfielder and he was causing problems. I think we put in four or five good crosses in the first half down the right-hand side. Alex Reid had a few chances, a couple of them where the defender did really well. There was one particular occasion where I thought he should have scored, but that'll come. You know, uh, on the flip side, we've not conceded again, so four points out of six. Not in the ideal position for three games in, but I'm still convinced we'll be in the conversation at the end of the season. Let, let, let me put you on the spot for a moment. I, I think I can probably guess this answer Go just going off the stats alone. But where do you think County are stronger? Do you think they're stronger at the back? Uh, and that's why we've had clean sheets. Or do you think we, we are stronger up front, albeit we're just not having the rub of the green at the moment? I mean, you, you mentioned a moment ago if things go our way, we're, you know, Reedy gets a couple and Rooney gets on the score sheet. But that it just didn't come off for whatever reason. Do you think County is stronger at the back at the moment, or do you think, or, or do you think we're almost there up front? And when that clicks, that'll be our strong part. Um, I mean, if you if you don't know anything about our count, our squad, and you just look at results alone, you'd probably argue against that, wouldn't you? Three one to Dagenham, um, but then you look at the next two games, you've not conceded. I personally think 
we've got a nice little nice little balance uh, throughout throughout the departments of the of the side. And I yeah. think it is a little bit of luck. I think it's people we've seen what Alex Reed can do. We've seen it last year. I think it's, it's when he starts to fire in all cylinders. If if you take confidence as an, as an example, John Rooney has played with ultimate confidence, and you can tell. You can absolutely yeah. tell. It looks it looks like a player who's got a season under his belt at the county, and he's he's taking he's gone up a notch again. I don't think he's got 19 last season. He's got two, uh, two already this season. If you add to that the goals that we're going to get from the likes of Madden, Reed, etc., and, and other players chipping in from midfield, there's no reason why we can't fire across the board. As it stands now, I've always said we've got arguably the best goalkeeper in the league. Two strong centre-backs, full-backs. Uh, and, and the gaffer's always looking to, to add to that. So, I suppose to answer your question... I don't. I don't see any weak links, and that's why, that's why we are in that conversation with Wrexham and Dagenham. Um, but in order for us to go up, we're we're going to have to win home games at the very least, and pick up what we can away from home. It's that simple, really. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree with you there. I just want to say, just just on the a couple of the players, I'm I'm sort of referring to the old guard a little bit in in, in many ways, but. Jordan Keane and Ash Palmer, I've been just reading rave reviews about these guys. I mean, Ash Palmer in particular, uh, he missed the first game. He comes back and everyone's saying, there he is, Ash Palmer, he's this, he's this, he's this. Just how important are those two players to count his team, in, in your opinion, Ash Palmer and Jordan Keane? It's incredibly important because the, 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 they're your building blocks of the side. Um, like we said, if you, don't, if you don't concede, it's half the battle. Um, some managers like... Uh, games to run, you know, three two, four three, five four. I I wouldn't be one of them if I was a gaffer. I'd like I'd like to build on a on a clean sheet, a bit more entertaining for the fans if a lot of goals are going in. But you're going to come unstuck. I think players like that ensure that, uh, and a Hogan and and James Jennings when he was there and other players, they ensure that things are done at that end as well as this end. Um, and 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 particularly with Keane going forward, I thought he was superb against Grimsby. Like I say, we we ripped him to shreds down that side. How we did, how we didn't convert, convert. I don't know. The the other the other new signings. I mean, the, there's there's expectations on them, isn't there? And, and I know Quigley's, um the, there's injury issues there, which he's you know he, he's trying to get through. Some of the other new guys. Have any of them caught your eyes in particular? Which ones are they? You know, Ash Palmer and Jordan King give us this and this to the squad. But which of the new boys are catching your attention? I mean, Madden's still relatively new. Uh, and from what I've seen, I, I, you, you can see that he's football league pedigree and, and good football league at that. You know, not just somebody who's lived on the fringes. Um, coming from where he's come from, it's, it's blatantly obvious. That's when he's not scoring as well. When he's scoring, it's a bonus. But there's, there's no doubt they, they, they all bring something to the to the side. Um, you've got to look at the boy from Villa. These these are talented lads who've who are knocking on the door at Premier League clubs. You know, and, and who, who they yeah. want. To get out and get experience, so it, we've got talent all across the board. Again, get, going back to Madden, players like that, um, he's still new and and, and he's still fine. He's, I feel I still think there's a lot more to come from somebody like that. As football fans, and <clears throat> I include myself very much in this, and I know that the people that watch this and listen to this are football fans, and I'm not wishing to um, criticise the whole audience and listenership, but. It is hard for football fans when they only see 90 minutes a week or on the odd occasion 180 minutes a week. It is hard for for the, for, for you know for, for, for fans to, to kind of take on board what they're seeing and not want to criticize constructively or aggressively or anywhere in between. Um, you know, they, they want to put their own thoughts across, they want to put their own feelings across. But as a player, and I know we spoke about it last week, and I did see a few <clears throat> a few comments on their various different outlets. Excuse me. I did see a few comments on various different outlets saying, oh, you know, uh, we need things to be working better than this, criticising this performance and that performance, which they have a right to do. They're, they're paying fans, they've paid the hard-earned, etc. But that gelling in period, that period of like, you just referred to Paddy Madden there, who's still relatively new, you know, given that he joined towards the end of last season. What stage do you think those new players will be at now, who Paddy Madden and the guys who joined over the summer even those, you know, like the lad from Villa who joined towards the end of the summer, um, what stage do you think they'll be at in their heads now of the players they've got to know, the team, 
the ground, the the manager's ethos, and, and and everything else that comes with joining a new football club. I mean, they'll they'll be desperate to make an impression uh, for for selfish reasons as well. If you look at the lad from Villa, I think his ultimate aim is to break into Villa's side, and we're we're a stepping stone. That's basically it. That that's being realistic. Uh, whether he goes on to have a career at Aston Villa, um, we don't know. But he'll wanna he'll wanna do it as quickly as possible possible because he knows he's being watched by Aston Villa. People like uh, Craig Madden. I think you're going to see the best of people Paddy Madden. after Paddy, Paddy Madden. Um, sorry, Paddy Madden. I think you're going to see the best of Paddy Madden after um, ten games, consistent yeah. games of, uh, where he's playing ninety. I think you know it, it'll come into his own. I mean, he's showing he's showing why we brought him in now, but you know, add goals to the mix, and uh, you're going to see what what he's there for. I think in their heads, these players are. You know, it, it won't take very long. Like you said there, you've hit the nail on the head. We only see 90 minutes. There's five sessions a week going on where the gaffer is instilling his, his ethos and what he wants from the club and what, what how he likes to play. And, and and players absorb it. It's the job to absorb it. That's what a professional is. And it's a, it's the job to adapt to what, what they're being told. And Because at the end of the day, that, the gaffer calls the shots. So I think, I think you're going to see little, little... Sorry, Chris. You're going to see little bits of it along the way. And it won't, it won't be too long before... It, it comes out, you know, and, and, and starts to come together. Look, looking ahead, um, Boreham Wood at, at the weekend. What what sort of test do you do you see there? What kind of thing do you envision coming against County this week? Well, I mean, I, I'm I'm biased. Uh, I, I don't <laughs> I don't I don't see anything other than a romping. To be honest, uh, I, I think we should and probably will uh, coast. Close to a victory, clean sheet would be nice. Now's the time to start picking points up because we, if you, you know, we've, we've, we're playing the likes of Wrexham in two or three games' time. I think you need to pick six up before you play Wrexham, take the pressure off a little bit because they're going to be in the mix as well. Can I just say, let me just jump in for one minute, Matt, because this party's being crashed. This party's being crashed by the oh, Lionel. Oh, boy. <laughs> Lionel. What's crack a lacking, chaps? <laughs> Dicko, perfect timing. You're looking good, mate. Welcome back. Oh, which, way, uh, which way do you want me? This way, that way. That way. This way. Perfect, that way. Perfect. I, I, how are we, chaps? You well? Yeah, we're good, mate. How are you doing? You're looking well. Really good to see you both. Mate, very good to see you. Um, we, we have to lose Matty shortly, so we're just going to wrap up looking ahead to Boreham Wood. What are you one. on there? See you that. Beer Keller. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Cheers. There we go. Cheers. I would say, Dicko, I would say as well. Come on, just... Shandy's, mate. Shandy's? What's the matter here? Try to trim down. Try, try to slim down a bit, aren't we? Fair play. Well, well listen, we have a very, very special guest joining us. Um, okay. Within the next few minutes, actually. Within the next few minutes. So, um, it, you know, and it's it's one that I know. It's, a, it's, a, it's another special guest that I know you know well. So, um, uh, I'm looking forward to bringing them on. But... I don't, want to, I don't want to cut Matty May wearing off. Um, Boreham Wood, let, let me take the last couple of seasons, Boreham Wood have been a, 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 an interesting one because they've been the surprise package uh, of the National League, if, if I'm honest, uh, on occasion. You know, the young manager who is not to everyone's taste, if I'm honest. I found him a little bit too Instagram influencer-esque, if I'm completely honest. But, you know, he, 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 they, they, they play good football, good pace on the wings. Um, but they've lost that surprise factor for me now. You know, the they, county know what to expect from them, and the strong defence that you've mentioned will kind of, in my opinion, dampen down that threat and then allow the front players to go and do what they've got to do to it. So, that might be the kind of game we see this week. Yeah, of course. Am I, I, I right in saying they, they come up from the south a few years back? Correct. Yeah, I thought they did. Uh, I don't know a lot about them, Chris, to be honest. Um, never played against them. All I know is it's difficult to see past, and this might be because I want it to happen, but it's difficult to see past uh, a win because we're going to have to start winning now. They're going to be a strong outfit, no two ways, but if you want to win the title or at least or, you know, go up, you're going to have to win these games. It's that, it's that simple. That's, that's the way I see it. 
Dicko, let's turn to yourself. Let's let's bring you. Well, welcome, sir. We should start before we go any further, Matt. I want to say congratulations yeah. to you, Dicko, because we we've not caught up properly on air since the summer. You broke some no. news. You're gonna be a dad I again. I am Can again, yeah. So um, so yeah. So my missus wanted another another baby, and I didn't. Um, so we we compromised, and we're having one. So yeah, <laughs> really excited, mate. Honestly, I'm over the moon, mate. Honestly, over the moon with um, yeah, we've we've uh, it's just been nuts. The kids are the kids are over the moon. It's just now it's all about prams and cots already, which is she's only halfway there. But um, yeah, it's exciting times ahead, mate. Exciting times um, ahead. And I saw you in a couple of charity games over the summer. I gotta I gotta say, how many podcasts you gotta host before you get invited to play one of these things? I don't know, but. Um, Do you know, um, I think I feel like I might have to uh, give you a shout out soon. Get your call up. Um, you might get your first cap. You <laughs> might get your first um, your first charity game cap soon if you uh, if you keep playing your cards right. I'm on that like a pigeon on a pasty, mate. What I'm going to do because I'm aware we're, we're about to lose Matty, and I, I just want him to say hello to our guest tonight as well because this is listen. We 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 got to talking over the summer, and I said, oh, listen, you've got to get on the show. You've got to get. On the show. I said, I think I'm right in saying. I said, I think you know Dicko, don't you? Is that right? And yo, oh, yeah, yeah, I love Dicko. Great character. So I said, tell you what, let's get you on the podcast. So I just want to just want to bring in. Say hi, Daddy. Oh my god. <laughs> Say hi, Daddy. Hi. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. Hi, Ava. Look at Francesca's face. Right. I just rushed well, 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 Good evening, Bev. What? Hello. So, Bev, what, what are your thoughts on Boring Wood? <laughs> what, am I, what are my thoughts on what? On Boring Wood. Absolutely cracking. They're doing great. I tell you, they'll win the league this year. No, we want hey. County to win, Bev. We, we don't want Boring Wood to win. Oh, I tell you something, it's a good drinking place, though. Good place for a pint, Boring Wood. <laughs> Shit, what know? are you doing? Get to yeah. bed. <laughs> um, for anyone who has not picked up yet, Bev Dickinson, Miss, Mrs. Dicko, Dicko's mum, we've got to say, we, we got <laughs> chatting over. It was actually towards the end of last season, if I'm not mistaken, Bev. Yeah. Um, can, I, can I ask your assessment of uh, of your son's performances? on the County Live podcast over the last year and a bit? Well, I've seen a couple. Um, Room for improvement. I think he needs to change his drink. What, what, <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you recommend? Oh, I recommend, don't know, JD. Used to be Goose. Can't afford Goose anymore. Can't afford Goose, goose now we drink it. I've got another baby on the way. Can't afford Goose anymore. <laughs> it's strictly the Russian standard now. Carlin but, super strength now. I've got to say, I've got to say, before we go any further, um, I could we could not have done this without the help of Matt Mainwaring as well. So it's <laughs> it a complete accomplished. Am I in trouble, plan, didn't we, Matt? Am I, am I in trouble? Yeah. It's yeah. all right, mate. Trade's on next week. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got I've got a lot next Gannon week. Next door. <laughs> <laughs> Trade, Gannon, Gannon, Trade yeah. and Gannon on together. Yeah, <laughs> Matty Senior. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got the gaffer next door, mate. She's uh, and, and she's cooking. Bev, Bev, had you got packing to do? Hey, mine's all done, mate. I was just waiting for you to drop yours off. <laughs> Cheers, Bev. Cheers. What was what what was Dicko what was Dicko like as a? Oh, I'm not. I'm left out, guys. I'm left out. What what was what what was Dicko like? I mean, I know that we all have football and heroes growing up, and. Um, and Dick, Dick oh, I'm asking with two players that I used to watch at County, and I used to, you know, I, I I used to love going watching, singing their names and everything else. I know Liam will will have been the same. He will have had players that he looked up to and got excited, you know, when it whenever it, maybe maybe a, a, a player came to his school or something, and he got a little, you know. Well, which players did Andy, it was Andy Cole. There was Andy Cole, and he was, should we say, slightly excited when he saw him at school. Is that Legend. maybe where the striker's touch came from, Dicko? Um, I think I was a defender at the time, mate. <laughs> I, no, in fact, I was just a headless chicken at the time. I'd play, I'd play wherever the ball was. Fantastic. Yeah, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a school competition, a school tournament. I think we'd won a tournament. We'd done really well. 
and he got. Uh, I think it was Andy Cole and someone else came in. I think Giggs came in once as well. But yeah, I was a. Uh, I was starstruck when I saw Andy Cole. It was. Uh, Matt, did you go to the same school? Did you guys go to the same school? No, 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 no. Oh, so, so you I missed out on the Andy no, Cole experience. That's only a baby. Yeah, I'm about four, four school years younger. I'm maybe five. Yeah. Maybe five, five. I'm, I'm, I'm 36 this year, so you're five school years, probably five school years younger than me. Yeah, five school years, yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't yeah. tell. You can't tell by looking at us both. Both <laughs> for <Awful gating. laughs> just, just a group of 18-year-olds. Bev, t- tell us about how, uh, how, how you felt when you found Liam was going to be playing for Stockport County. Oh, I was absolutely made up. Absolutely made up. Apart from he got injured literally just before he signed and was out for about 10 weeks. Yeah. And he'd only played about three games and they had a look at him, said, oh, yeah, we'll bring him in and then got an injury. And we thought, oh, my God, this is not going to happen, is it? And then, yeah, came back from injury and it was sort of like, get yourself down here. And that was the start, really, of, well, that was the start of his pro career. Growing up, was was was, was, was Dicko, was, was Liam, could you always tell he was going to be a footballer? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God, no. He started at um, one of his mates had um, a football party, as they all did then in them days at the local recreation centre. And um, he went along to this party, and it was a football party. And um, the person's party it was, his mum used to play for Manchester United Girls, and she was the manager of this team, a local team. So she said, oh, I can see something in him. He's a bit like Headless Chicken, but I can see something in him. So um, he was nine then and um, brought him along, watched a couple of games. And one day she sort of pulled him off the line and went, there's a pair of boots, mate, get yourself on. And he had a massive smile on his face. And then after the game, it was like, yeah, you could get to take your kit home. Your mum washes it. He came back the week after with silver shorts. I actually dyed them silver in the washer. (laughs) Why do you do that? Don't know how that even I've happened. Had pink shorts and then pink socks yep. and then everything over. Yeah, yeah. But you played for most teams that have had them colours anyway. Yeah, yeah. It was meant to be. So that's where it all began, and then it was just started, started playing for that team. Started playing for that team. Um, they went on to win everything in three years. I'd say probably seventy percent of the players ended up um, going to pro pro football. Um, Going to the academy, um, like the school of excellence. Yeah, all the yeah. Man also, United, play, it was really um, funny actually. He played for um, he was captain of his town team, and he was at Blackburn Rovers at the time. And it was a they were sort of pushing him to stop playing for his town team. So and he was like, no, no, it's my town, it's my town. I've got a place, Salford School Boys, blah blah blah. And he actually left Blackburn Academy to go to South Africa on tour with his town team as captain. He rang me one day and said, hi, Mum. I said, can you ring me back? I'm just at the bus stop. It's pouring down, coming home from work. He went, I just had to ring you. I'm on the top of Table Mountain. Mm-hmm. Oh, brilliant. I'm in the rain. Two days later, his manager rang me. I'm just letting you know Liam's not well. What do you mean Liam's not well? Because Liam's brown. Liam thinks he doesn't have to wear sun cream. He's got sunstroke. <laughs> and ended up ill for about three days with sunstroke in South Africa. What we found out though, it wasn't sunstroke. One oh, was players, it not? One of the other players had laced my drink with laxatives. <laughs> 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 that was an absolute right off. Literally, literally, we turned up for the game. We turned up for the game, and I was like, "Whoa, I need to go to the toilet." And then I was on the toilet for about an hour and a half. Missed the game. <laughs> my stomach was in turmoil. I thought, I thought I'm dying here. This is it. It's, it's the end. Yeah. <laughs> Spikes, spike me relaxatives. There's not, mate. I came tell you, home, what, came on with an eyebrow missing and everything. Oh, there's, there's nothing like a cup of laxative to see if you've still got that turn of pace, though. Matt, before we go on, am, are we holding you against your your? Are you being pulled away or? I'm just I'm going to eat shortly. We're all going to eat together shortly. Trey, Trey, Trey's in the background. She said, his tea's on the table. His steak's going to go cold in a minute. It's oh, not at Trey's. I'm not at Trey's. I'm not at Trey's. Oh, you know, Oh, you with the gaffer? I'm at the gaffer's, mate, yeah. Hi, Alana. Are you okay, darling? Get Alana on. Alana, come and say hello. 
She's in the next room cooking. Yeah, it's a family boy. show. What are we having for tea tonight, <laughs> Matt? I think she said cut something to do with cod. I don't know. <laughs> is it, is cod, is cod, it no, chippy tea? Yeah, chippy tea. Cod stew, I think. Something. Oh, right, Ooh, nice. Cod stew, I like it. I think so. Oh, she's she's special in the kitchen. Wicked. She can come again, huh? It's wicked. We'll do, we'll do like a meal tasting session where we all come round and sit. Rate my plate. She's ran off. <laughs> rate there my plate. Rate my plate. That's what we'll do. Come to my house. You can, we'll, we'll do that and I'll buy some like ready-made sandwiches from the co-op. <laughs> oh, mate, what, I, I'll, be happy with, uh, I'll be happy with turkey twizzlers. He's a good one. Smiley good faces you. and beans, mate. <laughs> I'll do cereal. Hang on. Don't burn it though. Do you, Matt? Do you have to bounce? Do, um, I don't. I just before we go into another round of Bev enlightening us on Dicko's history, I just, yeah. I just, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to shoot, mate. Yeah. Well, listen. It's been a play. I want, I want to thank you for helping us get Bev on today. <laughs> tonight. Yeah, thanks, Matt. My, my Matt. absolute <laughs> pleasure. Again, See you later, later, Matt. Everybody. We've loved having you on, mate. We'll see you next week. Enjoy the rest of it. Take it easy. Bye. So, D Dicko, I've got to say, I, you know, we, we had to play this hard to, uh, to 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 not let you find out because we had this lined up for last week, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> and um, and then you bailed. I did. No, I, was when thinking, you... I was thinking. Um, did you not when think? I when I dropped the kids off before, I was like, well, I've got to get home now. I've got the podcast on. And she's like, oh, I thought, I thought you'd do that at eight. I thought, I thought that was at eight or a quarter past eight. I was thinking, I didn't even think, how does she know it? What exact time I do that? No, I said I thought it was about half seven. Half, half seven, half quarter, quarter, to quarter to eight. Do you know what? I'm quite, I'm quite glad you, um, you, you didn't pick up on last week when you said, oh, I can't do it. All of us were trying to nudge you. Are you sure, mate? Are you sure? Are you, we don't mind pushing it back. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, lads. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Um, I done my hair, I done my makeup and everything. I had my glass of wine ready. When are you finishing your head? I'm not bothering now. I'm gonna leave. It's gonna get wind sweat tomorrow at the beach anyway. Yeah, true. What beach are you going to, Bev? I'm in Anglesey tomorrow with the kids for weekend. Lovely. Let if anyone wants to be I'm in work. Let's bring it back onto county. Uh, one of <laughs> one of Liam's most precious memories, I assume, in football, maybe not just even at county. Is scoring at, at Wembley. Uh, oh yeah, you know, and and that you game. remember it? She was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed all the way from from the from getting on the coach in, in in Salford to getting back off the coach in Salford. No, I wasn't pissed on the way there because I had Fran I had um, Francesca. Ava. Ava. I had Ava. Sorry, yeah, I had Ava on my knee all the way there. I waited till we got there, and then we got our table, and there was like loads of free wine on it. So what are you going to do? What was that day like for you when you knew Liam was going to be playing it? In fact, let's go back a step. And the, the goal at Wickham, the, the goal against Wickham, should I say, where Liam's broke free from the halfway line. We've, we've, we've spoken about it a number of times. It's a goal I'll never tire of watching. When all that was happening, OK, Stockport County, we're all County fans and it's, it's great for all of us. But for you personally, that's your boy doing that. What was that like for you? Oh, God, it was unbelievable. Honestly, it was just like, can't believe we get, we're this close. We're this close to Wembley now, and then to score like the winner in the playoffs, and it was just like, oh my god, this is actually happening. We're actually all I had in my head at that point was, shit, I've got to find a fifty-six seat a coach for all the family and friends because that's what we did. We got a coach for all his mates and all the family, and we all toddled off on a, on a coach of our own. How did you react to Liam when you first saw him off the pitch after the game, you know, when there's no fans and everything around? I'm guessing you were over the moon for him. Oh, I was crying. I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was so drunk. I was crying my eyes out. I was going, oh, I can't believe this. And then literally went, because I'd recorded it, and literally when we got home, first thing I did was put it on. Wow. And yeah, the whole we, game we, didn't see him for, we didn't see him for long. Um, obviously, we, we went off the pitch. Um, the stewards wouldn't let him on, him on the pitch, would they? No. Uh, we tried to get Ava down for me. The stewards yeah. wouldn't let him on. Um, and then, obviously, we, were, we obviously did the, did the presentation on the pitch. And then we went off to, um, obviously, the dressing room, celebrating, dancing in the dressing room, having a drink. 
having a shower. Then we went back upstairs to, to see, obviously, see the family and stuff. And then it was kind of, right, the family were going now and we were going back to the hotel. Um, so it was quite short-lived. And then I think the next time I saw my mum after that was when she was packing my suitcase to go Magaluf for a purely stag do. Literally yeah. came home and she packed my case for me and was going straight out. What did you pack in his case, Bev? Um, not much of anything, really. I think she was yeah. still pissed. I probably was still pissed. I probably <laughs> was. I mean, when we went, when we did go to Wembley and we took Ava with us, Ava was like three months old. Four, um, she was four, three months old. Four, she was born four, in four so, old, June. June yeah, June she was born months. in yeah, born in October, and was it? It was May one. Twenty sixth of Feb. That's your, your grandchild was born the twenty sixth of Feb. Oh yeah, that's the other one. That's the other one. Yeah. So she were only about what five months old or summer. Four, she was four months old for the day. Four months old, but I've been taking it a stop boat from being two week old in a car seat. So her the her first ten years of her life has been football. She knew yeah. nothing else at weekends. Right, she's travelled the whole country with me. We've everywhere. been everywhere. When he when he was in. Um, when he was in um, Peterborough. Brighton, no, Brighton, when he was in Brighton, every other weekend, I'd go to work, I'd finish work in Manchester, I'd get home, I'd drive to Liverpool, I'd pick Ava up from my mum, we'd come back, we'd get on a plane, we'd fly to London, we'd stay the weekend, he'd drop us off, and then I'd take her home. That was our weekend. And then alternative weekends, he'd drive home after the game on a Saturday, and Ava would be a bit in bed asleep so that he could spend Sunday day with her before he had to drive all the way back. I mean, occasionally there was times when I pulled up at the airport, he's got off the plane, come down the escalators, literally handed her to me and gone back up the escalators to get straight back on the plane back home. Wow. We've been everywhere. Yeah, that's <clears> something. It was a good one. He was staying in a hotel in Peterborough and um, we'd planned... We planned to come down, but we hadn't told him. We planned it with somebody else to come down. Hadn't told him anything about it. And like you, got lost. Just surprising him. For, <laughs> up. Lost, yeah. Well, I got lost for about two hours. And I'm on the phone to this other. Oh, credit's, oh, credit's gone. <laughs> she's she's pulled a Michael Rhodes. Not Michael Rhodes. Was Who was it? Oh. Who kept freezing? It's not a pain, isn't it? Well, Dicko, Dick, Dick I don't know. I don't know what the occasion was, but surprise! <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Hello. Oh, she's gone. We're lost. Back. Oh, we're back. Yeah. So we tur I turns up there with Ava at like nearly midnight, and he comes walking out of the hotel, thinking that oh, it's one of his mates' mates coming, and we're just hiding behind a post. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that was a I've, good one. I've got to oh, say, where have you gone, ben? yeah, we can't see you very yeah. well, Ben. Let me yeah. remove. Let Let me ask you a question because this is something that a lot of county fans will pick up on. There's, there's this, there's this um, <clears throat> saying about being bitten by the county bug. That 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 players and fans alike seem to they they seem to spend a tight a period of time with the club. Could just be a game for some fans. It could go to one game once and then it's there. Other times it's you know it's a bit longer or whatever. But you still come to Stockport County games, but that's where I first saw you. Have yeah. you has the Dickinson family been well and truly bitten by the county ball? Oh god, yeah. Yeah. For me, I mean, the only other club that I have a good relationship with, really, I'd say would be Staley Bridge. Um, apart from that, county for me is like coming home. I went to a game, I went to the playoffs um, the other week. Matty sorted me a ticket out for the playoffs and it was literally like, just, I'd never been away. And I'd, I haven't been for quite a few years, to be honest with you. I haven't been for quite a few years, but it was just like, I'd never, ever been away at all. And like the reception you get, and there's still fans there that I know, because I used to always, a lot of the time, I'd sit behind the net with the fans you know, and I built some good good friendships there, and those people are still there, you know, and it was like, oh, gosh, it's great to see you again, and, you know, it's just sort of looking out for someone sort of running on the pitch and scoring the goal, and thinking, <laughs> oh, that wasn't his. Yeah. I mean, I was yeah. even screaming and shouting when he played in the charity match the other day. <laughs> 
you know, and that's like a charity, just a, a little charity match that wasn't even, you know, just a kickabout between ourselves. Well, this Tell is it, and then you you got Baz with a wooden leg. Yeah. D D Nico, tell us a little bit about your charity games. I should say I've seen you in a couple, and I actually, as you can probably tell by the, the gloves behind me up on the wall, I do a fair bit of work in the boxing world. I was actually with Liam Smith uh, yeah. last week, oh. the week before, because you know, and I, and I I said in the interview with him that went out on all the big channels, you know, ah, oh, you know, I, I I'm still working with Liam Dickinson on the podcast, and, and how was it playing with him and all that? And he was saying he loves getting his boots on and having a kick about. I mean, he's got a big fight coming up now, so. We're, Probably yeah. not going to happen for a few weeks at least. But um, what do, what 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 is your involvement with these with these quality football games? It's just you know what it's it's <laughs> my, my my legs and my mind my mind tells me one thing and my heart tells me one thing, but my legs and, and my body tell me another. And I can't get around the football pitch like I used to. I'm 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 hobbling for days after it. But um, if it's if it helps raise money for you know there's all sorts of um, charities out there. I play for uh, the, the Jet Two All Stars mainly. And it's the likes of um, Dennis Irwin and Nick Culkin, and you know, you know, some of the ex pros and and the soap stars. It's just a, it's just a top laugh. They're all belting lads. We play all over. Um, but I've I've been approached by a couple of other teams now. Obviously, you watch me um, in that in that charity game for for Sands United, which is obviously um, for, for for dads that have lost children to um, you know stillborn or you know early deaths and, and, and a number of th number of things which is quite close to, to my heart uh, because obviously I've been in that situation myself um, but um, we played obviously we played that game we played against that Once Upon a Smile which is another fantastic charity so they've asked me to play for them a couple of times it's just unfortunate they've been playing like Skegness and, and places like that yeah but I will most definitely play for them at some point when, whenever I can uh, it's just trying to cram them all in now because there's, there's quite a lot, there's quite a lot going on, and especially with uh, with all the kids I've got and 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 the, and the bump on the way, it's uh, it's just trying to trying to trying to basically juggle everything at the same time whilst working a full time job six days a week. It's uh, it's tough, but I, I love getting the boots on. I love I love the crack. I know I know the level now. It was do you know what actually I got I got a uh, I got a DM the other day of Paul Turnbull. I oh yeah, no. If I fancied. Uh, if, if I fancy putting my boots on and, and, and signing for Stockport Town, um, go on, get in I there. Told, I just told him, uh, yeah, he's yeah, he's captain there, uh, but I just told him, no, I said, I might, I, you might get one good game out of me. After that, I'll, uh, I'll be a broken man. I mean, no. I must admit, I've I've been saying to him for years, going to training, going to coaching, going to management. He reads the game so well. I can physically see the way he reads a game when he's playing. It's not for me. But he's like, no, no, it's not for me. It's not for me. I like, I like playing the game, but managing and coaching wise, it's just not for me. You're a better podcast host than uh than I am. Um, that's what that's what that's what I'm aiming for. Yeah, I, 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 I want I want gloves above my head instead of instead of uh, pajama bottoms. <laughs> one final one then before before we let you guys go, Bev. I'm going to ask you a silly question here, but um. I, I feel I just want to hear your, your. I just want to hear you talk about it. Are you, you must be really proud of him. Are, are you glad he, he he got into football? Oh God, yeah, absolutely. I just think anyone that can get into sport can keep him on the straight and narrow. Absolutely, one hundred percent. And we have had like an absolute ten-year ball, just travelling all over the country, seeing the highs, seeing the lows, and being there for all of it. It's like I really, really miss watching him play now. Really, really miss it. And I know I've I've spoke to Ava about this quite often and said, you know what, you know, do you miss going to football? And she's like, absolutely miss the pies because she's just absolute pie mad at the you know the different grounds and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they both like to go to different grounds and watch the football, and Ava likes to try a pie in each ground. Yeah, she absolutely loves it. But the only other thing is, it's like for us, Saturday morning is still all about soccer AM. That is Saturday morning in my house still. It's just what we do. That's quite something. That's quite something. Well, well, listen, guys, it's it's been it's been um, wonderful seeing a different side of the Dickinsons. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think that the 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 look on Dicko's face. Might well make Keep it to the end of the season. Me quick. 
<laughs> D- Dicko, uh, night. Night. Come and say night to Dad. No, no, darling, I love you. Night. Say night, Dad. Night, come away, we kiss. Go we'll kiss. Ava, come say night I to Dad. Nice. No, no, okay. I love you. I love you. Good night. Good night. Good Well then, off you pop. <laughs> Liam, I, I know you had no idea that that was coming It's like down. this is your life. <laughs> we was already actually on the podcast and then you pulled up and I had to switch it all off and leave <laughs> and hide the and I had the iPad. I saw one of what you were doing in the kitchen. <laughs> well, listen, guys, I'm going to let you both bounce on. It's been it's been quite something. And we said, <laughs> Bev, when we first spoke, it was probably, what, three months ago? And we said it had happened. Yeah. And here we are. So, um, listen, it's been a treat. And who knows, maybe next week we have Matty's dad on. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be oh, brilliant. Matty's mom, Matty's mom. We'll get, we'll get, yeah, we'll you've got to get, get Trey get, on. Get Trey on. Yeah, lady. get Trey on, but don't tell Matty. Get Trey on. Yeah, fair's fair's fair. <laughs> and then we'll get then we'll get your family on, Chris. <laughs> I'm going around taking all our phones off them now. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, guys, have a good night, Bev. Can we get one of these from you? Yeah, we go. That's it. Perfect. That's it, lads. <laughs> we'll see you, guys. See you next week. We'll see you soon. Bye. See you later. See ya. Bye.